To Trump 101, the, these tariffs, this is why he's popular. The border's a four-year disaster. He threatens tariffs, already seems to have Mexico's attention, already has Canada's attention. This is why he got voted for. Yeah, I mean, the story is fairly obvious. Trump has done it before with Obrador in Mexico. That's how that Remain in Mexico policy evolved uh, during the first four years of his administration. So essentially, it's, look, Trump is going to dictate um, what Mexico and Canada do to try to stop the flow of migrants into the USA. So the White House, I assume it'll come out of uh, Marco Rubio, Secretary of State office, will say, look, this is what you guys got to do. And if they don't do it, they're going to pay this humongous tariff, which mm. will break both of their economies. So they have to do it, particularly Mexico. They ha right. She has to do it, Scheinbaum, the uh, new yeah. uh, president. And it's not going to solve the problem, but it would certainly mitigate it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's incredibly effective. And I, I think it's, you know, th this, is, this is why the outsider thing works for him. And, and I, I wonder why, why do regular politicians refuse to take action like this? Why is nothing ever fixed or, or really run properly. It just feels like they can never think of this, and it seems so simple. Well, they don't have the power to do it, number one. I mean, the, the big story here is that Trump was successful his last year in office, in 2020, in tamping down mm -hmm. the migrant caravans and, and the tremendous infusion of foreign nationals and, to some extent, narcotics into this country because Oberdor had to put his soldiers on the northern border with us and the southern border with Guatemala. The moment Biden took over, he threw that Remain in Mexico policy out by executive order, and Oberdor is more than happy to take his soldiers off the border because I believe, I can't prove it, that the cartels are pumping a lot of money into the Oberdor government, if you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah. OK. So he would, couldn't wait to get his army out of there so that the cartels could run wild, and they did for three and a half years. That was the single worst policy that any president ever in our history has made. Biden's the second worst president, and when you read confronting the presidents, still number four on the New York Times list after 11 weeks, when you read my book, you'll see that Biden's the second worst because he created problems. Yeah. It wasn't that he was incompetent. He was. Yeah. But he actually created this open border. Yeah. Why? For what reason? Never that, that, addressed it. And it's yeah. been a catastrophe. Yeah, that, that, the, the, the reason why, and that there's a lot of theories about they're trying to build a, you know, a new voting coalition of, uh, you know, of people from other countries that owe the Democrat Party for everything that they have, which I think is very possible. But, I mean, to just manufacture such a, 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 such a terrible crisis. I mean, the, the drugs that have come into the country have killed so many people. It's, it's created such chaos. You've got blue cities have, have been decimated by the cost of all of this. It's, it's, to, to manufacture that is amazing to think you can do that and get away with it and somehow get reelected or keep your party in power. Um, I, I want to take a listen to this uh, real quick. This is Maggie Haberman at The New York Times. Take a listen. There are so many unanswered questions, Caitlin, but if the idea is that there's lots of people around Trump in the White House who are going to try to prevent him from doing this, I think people are sorely mistaken. All right, so you know we're talking now about special counsels, things like that. We, we see this kind of gaslighting all the time. They, they ignore the very clear political nature of, of the investigations into Trump, which were political, and I think we all know that. But they clutch their pearls over the possibility that Trump might return the favor on them. What are your thoughts there? Well, look, uh, you know, it's oh, let me just put it this way, Rob. It's over. Yeah. We've had to endure it now. I mean, I've been in a, it'll be in January, I'm in the press business, the media business, 50 years. Oh. And about, mm, I would say, after the Iraq invasion by Bush the Younger, the left went out of control in the media. The corporate media went wild. And now it got worse and worse and worse. But it doesn't really matter what the New York Times writes anymore, or the Washington Post, yeah. or NBC News. It doesn't matter. They're all done. They don't have any credibility. Every poll shows that. Yeah. They're hemorrhaging money. The Washington Post is going to lose $77 million just this year. Yeah. MSNBC is now uh, spun off, which means they won't have any resources from NBC News at all. 
So that means they're done. Somebody might buy them, might not, but they're finished, all yeah. right? And the network news, every quarter, they're down another 10, 15 percent. Yeah. So those Americans who resent, hate, despise the fake news, they should be happy. <laughs> because the more they, they continue to do this, the faster yeah. their failure is going to be. Yeah, that's well said. Bill O'Reilly, sir, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. You know, everybody's reporting the same stories, the same spin. You turn the channel, it's always the same. But not us, we're different. We report the real news, no spin, just the facts. Turn to us and you won't turn back. Tune in to Rob Schmidt tonight on Newsmax.